guys, welcome back. It's Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy. So you might have noticed last week I did not have a video published. Uh, it was because it was Thanksgiving. I had some family in from out of town. We had a lot going on. Um, I feel like I said in a prior episode, we're kind of doing a forced remodel in our house. And so, you know, things have just been crazy. Um, I haven't really been working on any cars, haven't been building any projects, haven't been doing anything car or in garage related. But uh, we've still been having some great conversations. So today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the concept of renting out your car. There are companies out there uh, that allow you to rent RVs, camp trailers, camper vans, regular vehicles, uh, sports cars, exotic cars, whatever it is. You can Google them. I'm not going to use any by name because I don't want to endorse any of them. I don't want to give any of them any credit. Basically, I just want to have a conversation about the concept. Um, you know, everybody kind of feels differently about it. I looked into doing it with my Challenger. It's an extra car. We don't really need the car sitting and just collecting dust all the time. I do drive it on and off between it and my pickup um, and then the R8 in between. But, you know, for the most part, I thought it was a really inexpensive car. Uh, I'll make money when I go to sell it or if I give it to my daughter. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to retain its value for a long time. But in theory, if I could make some money month to month, letting it be rented out, maybe that's a win. So I started investigating it and there's a number of reasons why I ended up not going through with it. But again, the idea of renting out your car to really anybody, uh, they have to have a driver's license and show proof of insurance and things. But for the most part, it's kind of an interesting concept because you know, instead of uh, going to your dealership and buying a car or going to your dealership and buying uh, or leasing or whatever you want to do, you can go and rent a car um, and not use Hertz or Avis or any of those guys. You can literally do a person to person rental. So if you if you pull up one of these companies, you know, you can sort by truck or SUV or van or car or family car or wagon or whatever, convertibles, etc. You can sort by exotics, you can search by brand, you can search by year and model and all those things. And what you'll find is, you know, you can rent a, you know, run of the mill sedan, you know, let's pick on a, a Kia, uh, whatever, car, Elantra or, or what is it, the, the I don't even know. <laughs> One of the most generic Kia cars. And, you know, maybe you can rent it for 60, 70, $80 a day. If you go to the higher end, you can rent Lamborghinis and Ferraris and they might cost you, I don't know, 500 to $1,000 a day. And on the surface, that seems like a screaming deal for the person who's lending out their car. Um, you know, I'll, I'll use my R8 for an example and I'm gonna use round numbers. So they're fictitious, but they're round. Let's say my monthly payment on this car is $1,000 and I decide to rent it out one weekend a month. Right, it's just sitting, it's not being driven. I'm paying insurance, paying all the maintenance and costs and, and storage and whatnot um, in some cases. And if I rent that car out for $500 a day with a two day minimum, I know I'm gonna bring in a thousand bucks this month if I rent the car out. That thousand bucks in turn pays my car payment. So now I have an R8 literally for free, making the assumption I rent it out every month for one weekend. That on the surface sounds like a great deal, but what happens when someone's redlining your car or you know just treating it badly, cornering hard, burning the tires up, you know whatever it is, then you're stuck with the cost of maintenance. So then maybe you need to rent it out for two weekends or three weekends just to have the cash flow to make repairs and maintenance and those kind of things readily available. High-end exotics are kind of a silly way to go because you know generally people that are gonna rent those cars out aren't gonna treat them well. They want to drive fast. They want to do all of the things that people do in sports cars. So it's kind of challenging to take a high-end car and do that. Now, where it does make some sense, if you're looking at, you know, potentially a fleet of vehicles or, um, you know, a, a daily driver that you just don't drive daily, you can rent out some of these cars for, like I said, 60, 70, 80 bucks a day. And, uh, you know, so going back to that Kia, if I go lease a Kia Soul, Okay, it's a four-door, little, small, compact SUV. I can lease one for like $189 per month. And, you know, I, I want to say right now their, their year-end special is maintenance and everything is covered. Oil changes and everything is covered for the first year or two years or whatever. So, in theory, I could go lease this Kia Soul. 
Now I could go ahead and open an account with one of these companies. I could post this Kia Soul up for rent and I could charge 60 bucks a day, 70 bucks a day. We live right by an airport. People come here, they vacation here, they travel here. And in theory, it wouldn't be hard to rent a car like that out because that's less expensive than Hertz or Avis or any of those. Um, you know, and it's a brand new car. It's under warranty, all those things. All I have to do is rent that car out for three days and it covers my monthly lease. So now if I buy that car, I might put a little bit of money down or maybe not. But in theory, if I rent that car out for maybe a week, two weeks, three weeks out of the month, I can make hundreds, if not a couple thousand dollars and then pay my $189 lease and still cover costs of any maintenance, tire replacements, brake pad replacements, fluid changes and things like that if they're not already covered by the dealership's lease agreement. So on a lower end car, it does make some sense. I mean, if you've got the extra cash flow and your credit's good enough to justify that lease or that extra vehicle, you can actually make a pretty solid business out of renting out your vehicles. There are people that do that. Um, there's somebody locally who has four Jeep Wranglers. I'm trying to remember if it's two four-door and two two-door. And he rents them out. They're out every weekend. He rents them as a group rate. So you and your buddies can go out and go four-wheeling in the mountains and do your thing. And he's renting them for enough to justify four Jeep payments. So it's basically paying for himself. Now, what he can do with that, you know, he's got some options because in theory, he can realistically pay more than the monthly payment on that car and get those Jeeps paid off faster if he's renting them out often enough. And then, you know, in theory, those Jeeps are getting paid for, right? I mean, they're, I'm gonna adjust my camera here. They're, they're getting paid for so that he doesn't have um, payments forever, right? Once they're paid off and he owns them outright, that's pure profit. So it's kind of a cool idea if, again, you've got the credit and the cash flow to do it. Now, you know, to, to go another level with it, again, an exotic or a classic car or something like that's a little bit more challenging because there's a lot of stipulations that most of these companies put on renting out your vehicle. It can't be more than eight or 10 years old, it, maybe not even that old. Um, it can't have north of 100,000 miles. It, what else? It can't have a branded or reconstructed title. Um, you have to carry full insurance, full coverage, all that stuff. So there's a bunch of hoops you have to jump through. Um, you do have to have a certain credit score. You do have to prove, you know, insurability and all those things. So, you know, it's not an ideal fit for everybody, but it's a pretty cool way to diversify your income. And, you know, most financial professionals are going to tell you that having multiple streams of income uh, is, is kind of the best and fastest way to grow your wealth. So, you know, if you're a car person and you've got room, again, if you've got budgeting and uh, credit that allows it, you could, in theory, lease an inexpensive car, rent it out to make the payments, and then you can drive it otherwise, or just rent it out every day of the month. And you know, you can be, you can be as price conscious as you need to be. I mean, you can be very, very competitive. You can be super greedy. Anything in between, you can price it however you want to. But um, you know, I went on there and was looking again for my Challenger, and it does have a reconstructed title. So I couldn't go ahead and list it. I couldn't get it rented out which at the end of the day is okay. I was really just investigating what it looked like to do it, but there's no challengers in my area that are available for rent. And so I started expanding my search. And as I found um, kind of surrounding areas, you know, like the Eugene, the Salem, the Portland areas, um, challengers just like mine are being rented for anywhere from 100 to 130 bucks a day. So, <laughs> I mean, in theory, you can give a discount if someone wanted to rent it for you know three days or a week or a month. You can do monthly monthly rental rates, and um, you know literally just pick and choose your pricing. But if I rented that car out at a hundred dollars a day, which would be the bottom of the scale, for you know ten days a month, that's a thousand dollars a month. Which means in ten months, actually less than ten months, that car would have paid for itself. And so, you know, I mean, just kind of conceptually, it's a pretty cool deal. So that's all I got for you today. I just wanted to kind of talk about that. There's a couple of companies on the web that you can do this with. I would invest, I would encourage you to investigate and check them out. Um, if it's of interest, you know, I can help you talk strategies and things like that. But, um, but otherwise, I hope everyone's liking this stuff, liking the content, liking the ideas. I do appreciate the feedback. So if there's something you want to hear or learn about, let me know. 
As always, like and subscribe, and may every investment you make be a good one. Till next time.